So now we move on to financial ratio analysis. Uh, this is structured as follows. We will first just discuss, understand what and why of the financial ratios, the need for financial ratios. We look at the liquidity ratios, which is nothing but the, which measures the firm's ability to meet short term debts. We'll go on to solvency ratios, which is the ability to meet long term debts, right? This is a short term solvency position, this is a long term solvency position. We will look at activity ratios, that is the efficiency with which the company uses its resources. And then, of course, we wind up with the limitations of the resources. As I said before, we have a quiz at the end of each subsection and a final quiz and a recap of the entire module. As a uh, just to mention in solvency ratios, you have leverage ratios, capital structure ratios, and money coverage ratios. So under each of these sections also there are a couple of more ratios, right? That is under solvency. Liquidity ratios by themselves are dated. Let me not discuss all this now. Let me go one by one. This is just the structure. It's just the index of what we are going to do. Now, financial ratios. Why do you need them? Sometimes whole numbers by themselves do not convey much. Okay, let's take an example. Suppose I have two people here. Stuart Little and let us call, this is Mr. Adam Sainé. Okay, both have made a profit of $200,000 and are pretty happy with their results. Now, since I know Stuart Little and Adam Senior both made a profit of $200,000, uh, can I say uh, they both performed equally well? If I were to consider their performance, uh, performance is this data enough? Can I say... Can I say they're both equally efficient? They have both equally um, uh, made use, good use of their resources. If now I give you an additional information that that Mr. Adam Senior invested $1 million in his business and that's how he got a return of 200000 whereas Stuart Little could not uh, could not collect so much money. He had half the funding. He invested only 500,000. So it means that Stuart Limited, it means that Stuart Little earned 200,000 by investing only $500,000. Yes or no? Whereas, whereas Adam Senior, he invested $1 million to earn 200,000. So obviously, Stuart Little has been smarter. The return on investment for, for Adam Senior has been, can I say, 20%, 200,000 out of the, 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 the 1 million that he invested. 200, I will not say out of 200,000 upon, upon the 1 million that he invested. This is called his return on investment of 20% of 20%. Whereas, whereas <coughs> Stuart Little has got a return of 40%. Follow? So see how the whole number by itself did not convey much. But when I related it to the investment made, I immediately saw how, how Stuart Little worked smart and managed to generate, generate the same profit with fewer Resources with fewer resources. Are you following, students? Financial ratios, they are actually relationships between two or more numbers in the financial statements. Right? Ratios. Now, when you work out these relationships between, between two or more numbers, mind you, they must be interdependent. There must be a relation between them. One causes, there is an effect on the other. other <coughs> right? They, they must influence each other in a significant manner. Right? So financial ratios are nothing but relationships, but meaningful relationships, right? Uh, between 
between two or more numbers in the financial statements. Financial ratios provide additional information, right? Did we know the phenomena from the financial statements? We've got certain information. Now we are analyzing this, uh, analyzing the, 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 the information with the help of uh, ratios. So analysts also assess the performance of a company over the years. The company's performance, what was its gross profit ratio last year? What is it this year? Has it increased or decreased, right? Uh, has the cost of goods sold over the years been increasing? Has, uh, has it been increasing or have they been able to control costs? Has it been reduced? So they, it, it helps to analyze performance over several years to compare the performance of one company with its competitors or with that of the industry standards. Right? Now, computation, there are certain formulas and we can, frankly, learn the formula and compute the ratios. But interpreting the ratios Understanding it in the entire picture, that is what is really important. That is what is crucial. <clears throat> now, the types of ratios are liquidity ratios, solvency ratios, right? I've already mentioned this, the ability to make short-term debt, the ability to make long-term debts, right? The activity or efficiency ratios. And you also have profitability ratios and market ratios which as I said before, we will not discuss in this module, we will discuss it in the next module, right? So we are going to do, so, so the types of ratios may be liquidity, solvency, activity, profitability and market ratios. Let us go on to discuss and understand the liquidity, solvency and activity ratios one by one. Before we move on, students, a recap of the financial statements. I repeat, if you do not have any knowledge of accounting, any knowledge of financial reporting, I suggest, I suggest that you complete part one first and then come to part two. That is a natural flow. <clears throat> if you already have an accounting background, you already know something, uh, about about the financial statements, how they are prepared, etc. You will not find it difficult uh, difficult to follow this. Now, the financial statements we said was a balance sheet and the income statement. Balance sheet is a statement of assets, liabilities, and equity. Okay, it indicates the financial position of a business at a particular date on a particular date, right? At a particular point in time. So it's nothing but a statement, assets, liabilities, equity is what? The shareholders, funds, owners, funds. Assets is what the business owns, while liabilities are what the business owes. And equity is, of course, the residual amount, the difference between the two that belongs to the owner. A format of a balance sheet, you have on one side the assets, you start with the current assets like cash, receivables, uh, inventories, prepaid insurance, etc. These are items which are which can be converted to cash in a short period of time. And the others are non-current assets like property, equipment, land, building, etc. Right? Let less accumulated depreciation to give you the net fixed assets. The current and the non-current assets give you the total assets. This is one side of the balance sheet. The other side of the balance sheet consists of the liabilities, that is what the business owes, that is, that is to your creditors, the suppliers to whom you owe money, the accrued expenses, outstanding expenses, a current portion of the long-term debt. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you have, uh, uh, so you have the current liabilities. You understand since current portion of long-term debt, sometimes the long-term debt may have to be repaid in parts. So the part which is to be repaid immediately or within a year is the current portion of a long-term debt, right? <clears throat> so that's the current liabilities, short-term obligations. Long-term is a long-term obligation, long-term debt, giving you total liabilities. Difference between assets and liabilities will give you the balancing residual amount which is nothing but the shareholder's equity. 
it may comprise of the common stock the additional paid in capital this is nothing but the equity shares equity capital or preference stock we may have equity or preferred stock and the retained earnings the profits which have not been distributed and have been retained in the business okay it's a statement as on a particular date a statement so you remember statement of assets liabilities and equity as on a particular date so so the here we have presented it like the current assets the most liquid assets have been presented first in order of liquidity based on the ease of conversion to cash and then the non current assets being the most liquid on the other side similarly you have current liabilities that is short term obligations which are to be quickly or immediately and non current liabilities which you may pay later on based on the timing of the settlement is how you 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 decide whether it's current or non current right so income statement that's the balance sheet the income statement on the other hand is a statement of revenue and expenses over a particular period not on a particular date but for a particular period it indicates the financial performance balance sheet indicated the indicated the financial position that's right indicated the financial position position this indicates both operating income and the net income <coughs> again a format you have sales less cost of goods sold to give you the gross profit less operating expenses to run the business operating income if you have other non operating income maybe you've invested some extra money some interest income has come there are other expenses which are which are non operating expenses or losses these are adjusted then the interest expense is also reduced to get income before tax earnings before tax sometimes we call this earnings before tax right less the taxes taxes you get income from continuing operations if you have any plus or minus discontinued operations income or loss from discontinued operations adjust for the extraordinary items and then you get the net income students i repeat each of these items i am not in a position to repeat now they have all been covered conceptually all concepts very clearly explained in part 1 section a of part 1 details financial reporting decisions we covered all this there please i repeat again and again if you do not if you do not have a finance background you do not have an accounting background background i suggest you finish part 1 and then do part 2 it will be much easier and it will be a logical flow 